Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the Craving Crypto podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Silicon Valley tech stock bubble. So let's get right into this. As you guys know, every single episode on the Craving Crypto podcast, we do technical analysis on the total market cap, and that's what we start with. So getting right into it, primary prediction is still option one being 240 billion to be tested on the upside. And you guys, we are starting to finally get some upward action kind of out of this range that we've just been consolidating in this yellow kind of area that we just need to break above so that this can become successfully a major support level. But we are starting to see some buying candles right here. Now, if we get a few buying candles consecutively in a row and we can get above 211, really 211 and then 214 are gonna be your two main areas that we want to get above to really confirm that we're gonna see that upward action come into the markets at a much quicker rate than we're seeing right now. But you guys, it is looking good to see this curl and this bounce right here. This could be a double bottom and that could easily start to make a higher high pattern here and develop that trend and develop the right shoulder. So that's what we're still primarily predicting and it looks like the structure of the market is starting to paint that that is what will happen as well. But you guys, for the bearish perspective, 207 needs, needs to be taken out. If it's taken out, well, 207, 206, somewhere in that range, we will see further downside. So those are kind of the, the points that I'm keeping an eye on. Now headed over to the totalmarketcap.com. Let's just go ahead and refresh this so we can make sure that we've got the most recent live updates on all of these percentages. Let's find the top mover for the day, which looks to be Veritasium. So we're just gonna go over here and pull up Veritasium. Veritasium dollar. Awesome, so yeah, this one looks incredible, you guys. This is a very standard kind of sell-off accumulation period, just consistent volume throughout the entire trend that it's developing. It's got a very, very clean rounded bottom formation. So you can see very clean rounded bottom formation structure and it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows. Now on the short term, this is FOMOing right now. So depending on where our next kind of short term resistance is, I wouldn't really necessarily buy it at this price unless you're playing for a more longer term swing. If you're trying to play something like from down here up to these resistance levels, then you could totally buy this one. Uh, this actually does have a very similar criteria to what we learned in the, the previous episode about finding good setups where you've got this kind of spoon formation, this downtrend, and then you've got that rounded kind of spoon shape right here with all that volume. So it is a pretty good setup if you're looking to, to get in on this, but like I said, you'd want to average in or wait for a little bit of panic so that you're not buying pure green. But I do suspect that these resistance levels will be tested for Veritasium and the market structure is definitely painting a lot more of a bullish scenario rather than a bearish one for this coin. So that's the top mover for the day. That's a total market cap technical analysis. So the lesson today is really exciting, somewhat interesting, a little bit scary, bad for some people, good for others. It's quite the lesson. We're talking about the Silicon Valley tech stock bubble and the fact that it's very likely to be popped right now and what you should be doing to your stock portfolios to manage that risk. Now, as you guys know, I made a video about the S&P 500 pretty recently and said, you guys, we need to wait for some type of a support failure of a trend line to get that bearish structure to really confirm that we will see more downside. We did get a trend line failure on the S&P 500 and we have kept making lower lows on the shorter time frames. This is leading me to believe that we'll have around a 30 to 40% correction in the S&P 500 back down to this support range right here. 
at the 50% level on the Fibonacci. Now that isn't as bad as the 54% correction that we saw in 2008, but it's still pretty substantial. The MACD is really showing that we can have that now too with a little bit of a cross coming through. And like I said, that selling off uh, in the S&P 500 and that trend line failure right here is an early signal that we can see a lot of downside coming. And I go over to talk about in the description of this post why it's so similar to the 2008 kind of cycle that we saw with the internet bubble and a lot of the internet stocks and how this is just the same thing happening with Silicon Valley hype kind of tech stocks like Apple and Nvidia and Amazon and yeah not all of these are going to be Silicon Valley specifically but that kind of era and that hype cycle that caused a lot of companies to be created. Facebook is another one that has just been dropping significantly doing an ABC correction. So I am kind of labeling this out and really the one that showed that this could really be beginning is Nvidia. Nvidia had the biggest support failure of its trend line and has already dropped from 300 down to 199, so almost a 50% drop in value. And this is a very, very standard one, two, three, four, five cycle that needs to do an ABC. Aside from Nvidia Corporation, we have Amazon, which has a very, very big bearish engulfing candlestick. This kind of reminds me a lot of the Stellar and Ripple chart in January, where you just went way too parabolic and you're starting to reject. This again would be a one, two, three, four, five ABC corrective process that could take place here for the Amazon stock. And this could, you guys, this could drop all the way to the 50% retracement or the 618 or the 786, depending on how bubbly the stock is and how much demand there really is for in the real world. It could drop pretty significantly. For example, altcoins retrace 88% and sometimes more. Whereas Bitcoin retraced about 68%, a little bit, just a little bit more than that. So when you look at that and you compare the fact that Bitcoin has way more demand, it's a bigger market, it's more liquid, and so it's less bubbly, it's going to hold support better, it's not going to retrace as hard. Some of these tech stocks, that's not going to be the case. Some of these will retrace 80%. Some of them are going to do ABCs down to the 618. That's what I suspect for something like Amazon, which is a very big company that millions of people use every single day. So there's a demand for the actual company. Uh, so I wouldn't suspect this one to retrace 88% by any means, but it would not surprise me at all if we do see a 618 test or a 50% retracement. And that could, we're talking about, you know, a thousand dollar Amazon share, maybe even lower. So that's, a very big deal for a lot of people, especially if they're holding this coin, I mean, stock. <laughs> so it's just something to definitely be thinking about. Now, if you are holding some of these tech stocks, they're, it's starting to bounce a little bit on the short term today. I would say it's a good place to be reducing some of your risk in these tech stocks. They are just starting to look very ugly and not something that you'd want to be putting money in by any means. And every day they're starting to look more and more like something you want to be taking money out of, at least for the short term. Now you guys, the short term in the stock market's like 10 years plus. Short term in cryptocurrency is very, very different story. Uh, that's just the difference in the way that these cycles work. So you need to be aware of that, that these ABC corrections could be happening for the period of years. It could, it could be a very big long correction or um, it could fall really quickly and do kind of like what Cisco did, right? And just drop kind of instantly. And then it would, it would retrace in the period of like five or, or six years or so or something like that. But either way, they need to do a corrective process, in my opinion. They're creating the structure for a very bearish move here. NVIDIA being the one to kind of take off that uh, signal, the other ones to start dropping here. Amazon being another one that's starting to lead this whole par parade here of, of selling pressure. And then we've got Netflix, 
at right here looking exactly like NASDAQ did. And if you press play on this chart, it's already failed support and started to drop lower. With this trend line failure, it's not calling a top. It's seeing risk in the market. You also have a bearish MACD cross. Look at that. It's seeing risk in the market and being like, okay, I need to reduce my exposure. I can expect that these see further downside. That's that's not calling a top because we've already had a trend line failure. If, if the technicals are in place for downside continuation, it's not calling a top. Calling a top is when there's still complete buying structure. You're in a big green candle or in a very small red candle and you're expecting the entire market to drop. Now, if you look at Nvidia, that's not a very small red candle. That is a complete support failure and a complete loss in demand. The MACD flips, the histogram flips right here. The MACD crosses, one line crossing through the other one. Then the other ones start to follow the other tech stocks. So you guys, I'm not trying to be a doomsdayer. I'm not trying to scare you guys by any means, but as an analyst, I feel it is my duty to call it as I see it. And we did have this trend line failure and a lot of these stocks look really bad. They are reminding me of the beginning of the year crypto markets. Don't be putting your money in any of these and reduce your exposure to a lot of these stocks on the short term. That is what I will be giving you guys as advice for the stock market. Well, it's not financial advice, but that's my personal perspective and my tip. Obviously, all trades that you guys make is your own financial risk. And I'm not responsible for any of that. But you guys, the stock market is not looking healthy right now. And I know that I mentioned in my previous videos not to call the top on something. And I also mentioned that the stock market could have the potential of going higher because of a fractal comparison. But in that same video, I also very clearly stated that if there's a trend line failure, there's also a potential for an ABC correction. And that's what happened. So we're going with the potential that has the higher probability in its favor. And that's what we're seeing currently. Now, as far as stock market dropping and how that might affect Bitcoin, go watch my previous crypto or Craving Crypto episode on it. It's called, Is Bitcoin a Risk Asset? And I talk about all about whether Bitcoin would be positively or negatively affected by a drop, a 38% drop in the S&P 500 and in a lot of these tech stocks. So. That's the video for the day. I hope that you guys found some value in it. If you guys want to sign up for Binance and start trading cryptocurrencies, you can use this referral link. It's an amazing exchange. If you want to check out the TA for the day, here's a chart. Coinigy if you want to do TA on altcoins. BitMEX if you want to do leverage trading. My Bitcoin address if you like what I'm doing. You can send donations. And last but not least, the VIP course and signals. If you want to get more hands on with your trading, start talking with other pro traders in the chat lounge every day, see the signals, see the updates and start making money in the crypto markets. Thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and drop them in the box below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next videos. As always, stay profitable out there.